Sir William Stanier, a president of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers and designer of some of the best steam locomotives ever to run on British rails. But here in the Tank Museum, he's remembered for just one thing, a really awful tank. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. You know, occasionally people stop me in the street and say, Rob, I'd love to be an engineer, but I'm really not sure I fancy my work ending up in the tank museum being picked out amongst some of the worst pieces of engineering design. And to those people, I always say, well, in that case, you need to learn from the mistakes of others. Here we go then with the Institution of Mechanical Engineers bottom five tanks, five tanks and five lessons to be learned. Do people really ask you that, Rob? No, of course not. And if ever anyone does recognise me, they've usually mistaken me for Richard Hammond. Slightly annoying. Our number five tank is the Covenanter, designed by the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. Now this tank was so bad it was never used in action. And one of the things that makes it such an awful tank is its engine cooling system. Now the engine is at the rear of the tank whilst the radiators are up here at the front and they're connected by long pipes, which is ideal for leaks and airlocks. Why this strange design? Well, it's because they wanted a very low tank, one that was hard to see, hard to hit. The engine compartment was so very low the engine had to be made very wide and there was no room left for the radiators. So here's the thing from an engineer's perspective. By all means, design to your customer's specifications, but you shouldn't let a nice to have spoil a must have. Sure, it's nice to have a low tank, but it's essential to have a reliable one. And as soon as someone suggested putting the radiator on the front of this tank, alarm bells should have gone off and they should have looked at the whole design from the start again. It's much better to have a tall, reliable tank like the Sherman than a low, unreliable one. Our number four tank is the TOG2. And really, this represents any tank with an electric transmission. Ferdinand Porsche, I'm looking at you. Now, on the face of it, an electric transmission is very simple. The engine runs at constant speed, driving an electric generator. The electricity powers electric motors that drive the tracks. So you can do away with a complex gearbox and transmission, and the engine can run at an optimum speed. And for those reasons, some engineers became enamoured with this simplicity. Ferdinand Porsche, I'm still looking at you. But Ferdinand and others overlooked the reality. And the reality is what a good engineer needs to concern themselves with. The generator and the electric motors on here were so heavy and incredibly large. That's why the TOG here and the Elephant are so long. And that extra length just adds even more weight. So in the case of the TOG2, you have a large, heavy, slow tank with a gun and armour no better than a Centurion. But the Centurion is almost half the weight and much faster. So the moral of this lesson is don't get carried away by a solution just because it looks elegant in theory. You need to look at and concentrate on the reality. Did you get that, Ferdinand? Now you might think that the TOG2 was the largest, most cumbersome vehicle the British built. Hold that thought. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage. Princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. 
Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth. And when we talk of a steel behemoth, seven feet wide, 10 feet tall, almost 80 feet long and weighing 130 tons, please picture it in your mind's eye because it was destroyed long ago. Our number three choice is the colossal machine that was Nelly, also known as White Rabbit, also known as Cultivator Number no. 6, and was designed early in the war when many people were expecting a repeat of the trench fighting of the First World War. So a team of engineers were tasked with creating a machine that could dig a vast trench towards enemy lines, allowing soldiers and tanks to approach in safety. Amazingly, they came up with a design for this science fiction idea. More amazingly, one was actually built. And even more amazingly, it actually worked. But here's the thing. It worked in an English country park where there were no dive bombers. There was no artillery. But would this vast machine slowly tunneling towards the enemy have survived on the battlefield? It's a reminder to us all not to get lost in the engineering details, but to keep very clear in our mind the bigger picture. Nelly was a very clever engineering solution and at the same time, a completely useless machine. The Tank Museum is a registered charity and every purchase you make from our online shop directly supports our work. We ship worldwide and if you subscribe to our email list, we'll give you 10% off your next order. When you finish this video, go to tankmuseumshop.org and you'll find something you never knew you needed. Our number two tank is the Harry Hopkins. Now this is a light tank and that's really its problem. On any battlefield where the enemy has anti-tank weapons, a light tank is large enough to be spotted and to be a target but not well enough protected to be safe and not well enough armed to do any real damage. The Harry Hopkins was a development of the Tetrarch. It did have better armour, but unlike the Tetrarch, it was too heavy to be transported by air and not as mobile as an armoured car. It's neither one thing nor the other, and that's why it's number two on our list. Before we leave this tank, let's remember the man it was named after. Harry Hopkins was the right-hand man of President Roosevelt and a key figure in the defeat of Hitler. Hopkins had been diagnosed with cancer before the war and had most of his stomach removed. Doctors thought he would be dead within weeks, but he put his remaining energies into the war, travelling across the world to meet Churchill and Stalin to plan the downfall of the Third Reich. Churchill described him as a soul that flamed from a frail and failing body. Travel in the war was uncomfortable and dangerous. And in 1941, this desperately ill man flew from Scotland to Russia in a flying boat. A cold 20 hour journey north of the Arctic Circle under the nose of German fighters. In my mind, he deserved better than this tank. Okay then, what have we chosen as our worst tank? Well, it's a bit of a funny one really, because in many ways, it's a great tank. When it worked, it was one of the best in the world. When it worked. The Institution of Mechanical Engineers number one tank on this list is the Chieftain. A fantastic tank let down by an awful engine. Engineers design to customer requirements, but they shouldn't blindly follow them. It's okay to question product objectives, to challenge them if it feels like there's a risk they could take the design in a wrong direction. In the case of the Chieftain, the requirement was a multi-fuel engine that could operate on diesel, petrol and jet fuel. Now that led the designers to choose an unusual opposed piston two-stroke design that proved to be unreliable in the field. To add insult to injury, the Leyland L60 engine here was only ever run on diesel, and so a conventional engine could have been used all along. 
Now the fault lies with the engineers who didn't question that requirement and who allowed hope to triumph over experience in believing they could make an unusual design into a reliable engine. Now, some engineers believe they're only earning their wages when they invent something new. But as the scientist Freeman Dyson once said, a good engineer is a person who can make a design that works with as few original ideas as possible. And sadly, the chieftain here had one original idea too many. And that's why it's our worst tank. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers bottom five tanks. And if you're interested in an exciting career in engineering, then click the links below. Please do also continue to support the wonderful Tank Museum on YouTube and on Patreon, and perhaps even think about becoming an engineer yourself, because the world needs more engineers.